Hi, everybody. This is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm answering questions again. This one comes from Shane B6446. This was asked a long time ago, and I apologize, Shane, for not getting this answered. Um, you pay good money, $75, to have these questions asked. Having said that, oh my goodness, you asked five questions. So this will take a little while to get through. Hey, Matt, I love your videos and really appreciate you offering your time and expertise here in this way. I'd be much obliged if you could answer some questions that I've been stewing over. Most of them relate to Trinov waveforming and also one about UST projector screens. I'll try to be short and concise, but still provide you some good detail, excuse me, for context. In a five or six subwoofer Trinov uh, waveforming setup, do the drivers of the subs need to be facing out towards each other to properly form the planar wave, or can they be oriented in whatever direction is most convenient? Um, they can be uh, oriented in whatever direction is most convenient. Subwoofers are largely omnidirectional. The way that you face the drivers has nothing to do with how the wavefront is being created. They actually are creating a spherical wavefront initially. It turns into a planar wavefront only after they combine. And again, that has nothing to do with the driver itself. Um, you can face them against the wall. We actually do that sometimes on purpose. So the reason to face them against a wall, you have to have enough distance. So you can't just face it like right up against the wall. But let's just say you had four or five inches between the woofer cone and the wall. And we'll assume that that's more than enough to avoid any kind of um, issues with the driver hitting the wall. It changes how the woofer interacts with the screen. So even though there's still this pressure wave being created, the screen doesn't create the same kind of ripple effects that happen when you've got a subwoofer right behind it. So it's a trick that uh, Adam Pels actually had told me he had done a few times. And in, Interestingly enough, in the few systems I had done at that time with waveforming, the subwoofers had always been facing sideways. And then there was some complaints about what happens when they face the screen and causing ripples. And I'm like, that's a good point. How do you fix it? And Adam's like, well, I've turned it around if I, if I can get away with it. And that actually seemed to be a good fix. And I've done that a few times myself now. There are some things to consider, kind of like technical aspects of that, which is that it does load the driver. And so it can have an effect on the response. There's a slight loss of efficiency because of that loading. But if, as long as you've got more subwoofers than you need, um, you should have enough headroom to overcome that slight loading effect. And it is pretty slight. I couldn't even give you a number of dBs. I don't really know the answer to that. Second question. If somebody is planning to do waveforming setup, is the placement of the main listening position at the usual two thirds room length or one room, one room, uh, one third room length if sitting closer to the screen still as critical as it usually would be? Or do the options for locating the MLP loosen up some? They loosen up almost completely. So, it, of course, it's going to depend on how good a job you've done your waveforming setup. It's not like you do waveforming, it's perfect. You don't, it's not perfect. But if you have enough degrees of freedom to work with, meaning you have enough subwoofers in the right placement in the room to get a fairly ideal waveforming system going, you're generally going to find that you can walk anywhere in the room to within probably six inches of the walls. And you're going to get roughly the same base response at any of those positions. Now, like I don't have that perfect of a setup, but if you measure around in my room, what you'll find is that the base response doesn't change very drastically. The base response is pretty consistent in shape. What changes in my room is level. As you move back towards the back wall, it's not able to fully compensate for the gain that happens as you get close to the wall. And so my rear seats have the same base response as my front seats, but it's about three or four dB louder. So that's something to consider. In a waveforming setup, if the sub on the front wall, subs on the front wall are placed fairly close to and partially behind a projector screen, is that a big problem? Well, we talked about that a minute ago. If I switch to doing projection in my room, then the subs on the front wall would likely have to be placed within 14 inches of the screen. Oh, actually, that would be okay. So 14 inches of screen, I don't think is going to be likely to cause an issue, but you'd also have enough depth in that scenario to flip the subwoofers around, like I mentioned, and you could always try that. So basically, there are options. You can turn the subwoofers sideways, you can face them against the back wall instead, or you can just see if there's enough distance there and try putting it. Um, there might be other tricks, like this is a new technology, even though we've been using it now for about a year, year and a half, something like that. I don't know, we definitely haven't, I haven't tried all the different things that help resolve those issues, but yes, it can cause some ripples in the screen. So it might be like, I'm just thinking out loud, you might be able to use some polyester acoustic insulation in front of a subwoofer that's four inches thick or something like that. It would have a high frequency filtering effect. It might also affect air movement enough that without affecting the response of the subwoofer itself, 
helps to reduce that ripple effect. That could be something you could try. I mean, there's just, I think it's one of those things you have to, we are going to need to try ideas out and see what, what works best, but is there a problem? Yes. It can cause ripples like pond ripples. All right. My current space is not dedicated. It's all original from when it was built in the nineties. Three of the four walls are house perimeter walls with concrete foundations behind them that are underground level. So it's like a basement theater. Wall number four on the room's right side is just typical drywall and studs. The room is 25 feet long and 13 and a half feet wide at the front, but the right side wall winds out by about three feet. Roughly every five feet, you go towards the back of the room, like stairs if you view the room from above. Interesting. The rear wall of the room is about 23 feet wide. Would waveforming be the best choice in a room like this with its non-ideal shape and very different kind of wall materials? So the wall materials are probably not going to be a huge concern with waveforming. That is going to be addressable. The weird shape is it's an unknown. So here's what I would say. I think that it still could work and it's always worth a shot. Um, the subwoofer design you would use for that is still a good subwoofer design regardless. And it's not like there's other methods that are going to be inherently better. It's just that it's possible that room shape issue is not going to be ideal for waveforming. One thing you could consider, I don't know why it's like that per se, but you could try making the room more rectangular. So 13 and a half feet wide is not super wide and I wouldn't want to like shrink it to that, but you're indicating that it, it gets widens by about three feet every five feet in sort of a step fashion. So you might take, take it at like 19 feet and just put it all in and that might help reduce issues, but I would try it as is first before I get into anything. Okay, acoustically transparent screens that are compatible with the UST projector are very hard to find, but I have come across some companies that make that claim. I have ceiling obstructions in my room that make seal, uh, doing a ceiling mounted long medium throw projector unfeasible. So I need to go with a UST projector, but I still really want to do an AT screen so I can place my center channel and possibly my left right speakers as well behind it. Based on the two thirds or one third room length standard for placing the MLP, my seating would be around 13 feet, six inches or six feet, 10 inches from the screen. And it is a light controlled room. I don't expect or want any specific recommendations on what equipment to use. Uh, but I was considering pairing the Hisense UST projector, that PX3 Pro UST projector with a 120, 130 inch screen like the EPV Sonic AT8 ISF Efinity, the XY SoundMax 4K or the Silver Ticket WVS. There are a lot of variables and trade-offs to consider with this approach. Do you have any insight on pairing an AT screen with a USD projector? Unfortunately, I do not. Um, I have no experience with any of those screens. I have no experience with that projector. Um, I have done short throw, but I've not done ultra short throw projectors because they're just not typically used in high-end home theaters. There's too many compromises. So in the kind of work I do, I've not used those. And in the scenarios where I have used USD projectors, we were not doing AT screens. So all I can tell you is I think that you would need to try it and uh, hope it works. I would think that any standard unity gain or below unity gain screen that's acoustically transparent, especially a fabric screen, like a, a woven fabric screen that's got a really smooth finish, would work fine whether it's an ultra short throw or a long throw, but I've never tried it and that's just conjecture on my part. So I don't know that that's super helpful for you. And it's been three months. So you may have already built this theater by now. So maybe more than three months, actually. So how about this? Uh, I apologize that I didn't get these answered uh, quick enough. When this video posts, please let me know if you did go ahead and do this and how it worked for you. I'd be curious myself, and we can maybe do a report back on how that went. So thanks, everybody, for watching the video. I hope this video was helpful and interesting to you all. Uh, we got more coming.